Hi, this is Corey with Wave Machine Labs, and in this video tutorial, I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of all of the features in the edit view in Aurea Pro. So the first thing to show is how incredibly intuitive the touch gestures are in Aurea Pro. If this is your first time working in a digital audio workstation on the iPad, or you've worked with other workstations on the iPad, um, I think you'll find it incredibly easy to zoom, use all the multi-touch gestures, and move around in your sessions um, compared to when you normally on a desktop or a laptop have a keyboard and mouse. Uh, so the first thing is there's two types of pinch to zoom, vertical and horizontal. So vertical, very simply, just zooms your track and you can even make one track full screen and pinch to zoom horizontal will zoom in on the waveforms and you can actually zoom in all the way to the sample. So if we look here at this waveform, you can get all the way in there. And this makes editing a breeze um, when you need to do critical editing um, and really see what's going on way down there. Uh, and so you'll notice when I did the pinch to zoom vertically, the tracks on the side, uh, all the options automatically hide. So if you load up the demo project, you'll see all you actually see are the track names and Mutant Solo. Uh, but every track, if you zoom all the way open, you have quick access uh, to your Mutant Solo, your record arm, your effects button, which brings up the PSP channel strip and any inserts that you have on the channel. Um, you could change all your track colors if you like to organize that way, uh, where it says audio, this is quick access to all of your automation. And so almost everything in Aurea is automatable, uh, including the PSP channel strip. And if you have any inserts in your effects window, those will show up at the bottom of this list too. Um, so for example, if you go to volume, there's nothing on there right now. Um, but what's really nice about working on an iPad is that you could draw everything with your finger. And it's really nice, really easy to do. You can get in there, you know, create some exact points. And um, um, and then you have the options for the audio tracks to get into transient detection and then audio warping. Uh, and when you're in audio warping, you can grab uh, one of the transients and move it. And this is real-time audio warping um, using Elastique's uh, warping engine. Um, but it works incredibly well. It is the same exact elastic audio and audio warping engine that you see in professional desktop DAWs, and it sounds phenomenal. Um, so then looking at the track section, and we go to a MIDI track, see there's a few different options here. You still have record arm, color code for the tracks, mutant solo, your track name, the effects window, which of course will bring up uh, the real-time MIDI controls as well as the channel strip. And then you have quick access to your instruments. So you could switch between all of your Lyra sample instruments uh, as well as the Fab Filter one and Twin 2. And then at the bottom of the list, you have quick access to all of your third party apps to run in MIDI as well. And then the same thing with the automation controls um, for the overview of the regions. You could see all of the different automation controls just like in the audio tracks. Uh, so the other button that's different here is this little piano button. If you tap on that, this takes you into the piano roll. We will cover the piano roll in depth in another video, but essentially um, here you could do all of your MIDI editing. You could change your note lengths, change velocity. Uh, you can look at all of your MIDI CC messages, uh, 0 through 127, they're all here. Uh, you could change it between different types of write modes, and you can also do uh, multiple select by hitting the key where all the notes are. You can quickly change between the different MIDI tracks. So going out of that, um, we'll take a look at the rest of the edit window here. So um, if you zoom really far in, let's go to the beginning of our session here. So if you look at the beginning or the end of any region, you see two arrows, one on the bottom left and one on the top left. The bottom left, if you tap and hold, you see a big arrow, and this is your quick trim. And then on the top left, 
you guessed it, it is your fade. And so you just tap and drag to create a fade. And then in the upper right corner, you have some other options for changing your fade. So I'm just gonna go ahead and split this so that you could see on the other end, you get quick trims from both sides as well as your fade out. So everything is incredibly intuitive and works very quickly and easily. Um, so on the top row are all these quick select tools. These are the most popular tools. You have quick access to all of your tools. You'll find a lot of these in the edit window as well. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, multi-select works for uh, selecting either multiple tracks, and it also works for selecting multiple regions uh, either way. And then of course, cut, copy, paste, um, audio, copy, audio, paste. Um, you could split single tracks, you could split all tracks, you can rejoin tracks, um, you could duplicate things, you can lock regions if you don't want anything to move. So those are just your basic editing tools. And then there's some extra features that are hidden inside menu bars. So at the top of the screen where you see process, this actually has two different functions based on what's highlighted in your session. So if you highlight an audio region and you open up process, you have destructive uh, features for gain, normalize, um, your DC offset, reverse silence, and pitch. And you can also um, make some changes to your fades here. You could reset them. And then if we go here to the top of the session and we highlight a MIDI track and go back to process, you'll see that everything has changed to um, destructive MIDI processes instead of audio processes. So if you've worked with MIDI before, you will recognize all these. It's all the basic MIDI processes that you're used to seeing. Um, quantize, transpose, humanize, everything's here. Everything's incredibly easy to use, brings up a window and click OK and everything quantizes. Um, then of course you can undo and redo as you see fit. So where it says none right now, that is your grid length. And there are many different grids to choose from. Uh, we could change the way that we're looking at our session. Right now it's in minutes and seconds. You could change it to bars and beats, and then you can change your grid to quarter beat. And when you zoom in, you see your grid lengths there. Change it to eighth beat, you see the grid change. Um, so now everything can snap to grid. Uh, in the upper left corner, we've talked about this before, but this is your time settings. Um, so you could set the tempo for the entire sh session. These are global settings for the tempo, um, time signature as well, global, it's one setting, and your metronome settings. However, with Aurea Pro, you can go into edit and tempo track, and here you could set multiple tempo changes throughout your song. And you can also set multiple time signature changes throughout your songs. And then if you ever um, wanna override those but keep your settings, you can always click no on here and it defaults back to the single global setting and you could switch back and forth in case you ever wanna hear your track with and without your specialized settings that you made there. Um, the editing is incredibly intuitive uh, across the top in the playhead. Anywhere you click, you can put your playhead in the mark and you know you could do things like click split. You can multi-select tracks. You could split all of them to do multiple track edits all at once. Editing this way is a breeze. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a little bit different than working on a desktop DAW, uh, but I think you'll find that Using your hands and zooming in, you can actually begin to work pretty quickly like you do on your normal desktop DAW. Uh, and everything's so smooth that it's very enjoyable to use. Uh, so, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at And we will see you in the next video. Thanks.